some fans that would say it might even be better in the long run if we were to lose this game, sack him, okay. get someone in, turn it round. All right, hello and welcome to the Match Day Vlogs YouTube channel. As always, please remember to smash that like button because it really does, really does make a difference to the channel. We're here this evening to talk about the upcoming game up at the Molyneux. We're very pleased to be joined by someone from the opposition. Going to be talking about who exactly we'll be facing. So uh, without further ado, we'd like to welcome to the show. It is George from Always Wolves TV. How are we doing, George? Keeping well? Yeah, evening both. How are you? Yeah, very good, thanks. Very good indeed. So um, we finally got a win on Saturday yeah. and you very nearly, I've, I've watched the extended highlights. Mm -hmm. I also saw saw the, the foul on the goalkeeper. I'm, I'm sure you've got your, your views on that as well. Um, what's it been like? I mean, you, you haven't won a game in an awful long time. It must feel like you do one. Yeah, and, and I think... the. I do think this game has probably come at a good time for you lot, to be honest, because there's there's now that much pressure on it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is final. This is final straw time for um, O'Neill, and the way it's been going, it seems like we're only heading in one direction. So I, I can't see plucking it out of nowhere, to be honest. Obviously, we haven't had a win all season. You're coming off the back of a win, uh, but we we built so much onto the Palace game and the Southampton game okay. that we, we piled the pressure on it. And it's just typical mm. that now you found a little bit of form because you won in the cup. <laughs> you won in the cup as well, didn't you, before? We so did. You, you, you two on the bounce, really. And Eventually. We, pick, we pinned all of our hopes on this game. Mm. And I just get the feeling that, that we put so much on it. And now there's this whole... We've become just like a Gary O'Neill saga, to be honest. His press conferences, everything. And I just think it might be the day when when the House of Cards comes falling down for him, to be honest. I've, there's been rumours today that the chairman's um, pulled him into his office. I mean, just rumours, but apparently said, you know, it's, it's win or bust for you. Right. If you're coming it's... into it with a little bit of, of a higher ebb, then I don't know. Yeah, I don't think tricky. any Wolves fans confident to be honest at the minute. But I mean, with with Wolves the way they were, I mean, am I right in thinking you were under some strict things with FFP? You spent a lot of money in the Championship to get up to the Premier League, and then all of a sudden you've got to to balance the books. So that's the reason for a lot of your your big players going. Is there is there a feeling that effectively you're in a a bit of a rut because of the fact you've sold the talented players because I remember seeing Gary O'Neill on Monday Night Football being touted as the next Pep Guardiola for his genius tactic skills and I'm thinking steady on it's just been on a bit of a run here but um, but but what what is the mood amongst Wolves fans I mean is it a case of well we're left with these players what do you expect or is there a feeling that we should you should be getting more from it yeah I think it seems a little bit of a, of a managed decline to be honest um They've got this model, so Fosson, they've got this model to make us self-sustainable. They're sort of, they want to be the next Brighton, to be honest. Um, and yeah, that, that famous Gary O'Neill Monday Night Football, um, it's become basically, he, he made a rod for his own back with that. I mean, as you said, steady on, I think, was exactly what went through my head. I mean, he, he got one <laughs> win over City. We sat back, hit him on the break twice and uh, couldn't wait to lord it over Pep. And I think that was just like one of many missteps with him, really. I think he, he, he's ran before he could walk a little bit. But yeah, in terms of the investments and stuff, it was it was last summer, really, that we had to um, to sell up a bit to meet the, the FFP. Um, but we got a lot. Of, we got more money. We got the sale, the unexpected sale of Neves to, to Saudi. And he was mm. coming down to like last year on his contract. So people were saying he weren't, it, that he wasn't going to go for as much as we were expecting. But we got good money for Neves, which helped us. And then uh, Mateus Nunes went to City as well. And that covered a lot of it. And we were sort of out of the woods. But it was that that season um, a couple of years ago when we were, were rock bottom at Christmas. And we had to have a January window where we basically had to um, like go and just spend the lot. So we bought in like Lamina, Cunha, and we spent like, over 100 mil 
or 100 mil ish in one January window purely to stay up. And we were paying the price for that last summer. Um, oh, yeah. But right. we, apparently we balanced the books this year and it's there's no FFP issues anymore. It's purely because they want to make us or make us make themselves self sustainable, not really put any more money into the club and just let it tick over. But mm. I think everybody, all fans, everybody in football knows that's just kind of circling the drain in the Premier League, isn't it? You're never going to keep up. It, it's it's almost impossible. And I think our owners have had it all good, really. They bought us in the Championship, got straight up. And I don't think they realise that, you know, there's no guarantee if you go down, you're going to bounce straight back up. Oh. Um, oh. You can sit and rot in the Championship for 10, 15 years. I mean, look at Sunderland now. I mean, our rivals, the Albion, they've been down there seven years now. So I think they're playing a dangerous game. Um, and we're going to learn a lot Saturday. Going to learn a lot. It's a big That's game. Be a tough one. Yeah, very, very big game. I mean, you've got some players that, that we certainly recognise, uh, Mario Lamina, who we're familiar with, who I quite enjoyed watching. Um, never gives Mike the ball away. I was the only one. I had the Lamina shirt and everything. I was a big fan of Lamina, so um, I'd be pleased to see him again. But who, which players should Saints fans be watching out for uh, from the Wolves lineup? Who's your I big mean, threat? First name's got to be Cunha, hasn't it? Um, you got to watch Cunha when he's on it. I mean, unplayable quality player. Strand Larson up front, he's, um, you know, we've been looking for a focal point since him and Ezra really. And um, Strand Larson, he, he, he played, I think he's got about four goals. He's steadily going about his business. He's that typical focal point. Um, good in the air. And, and he's quite handy, you know. He, he's not afraid to get in and amongst the centre-offs. So, obviously, our two front men are pretty good and, and scoring goals. I mean, we've scored goals this season. It's just our defending. That's been atrocious, mm. particularly set pieces. Uh, obviously, it depends what formation he plays, whether he plays any outright wingers or not. But you've got to watch our full-backs. I think with eight Nori, uh, probably more dangerous going forward um, than he's useful defending. But again, it depends what system we play, because if he's at wing back, then he, mm. he's fine. But if we play as four at the back and he's a full back, he often gets found out. So as an attacking threat, you've got to watch our full backs. I think Samedo as well. Uh, yeah. Gomez, he can be a, obviously scored against Palace. I mean Seymour is a defensive mid, but if he's if he's on it, he's just everywhere. So Joe Gomez. Um but yeah, it's 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 the same people carrying us really, week on week. Um but it's, it's our defensive struggles that are just letting us down time and time again. And it's set pieces in particular. So are you are you like any good at set pieces? Because if you are, um, you'd probably be all right. <laughs> you'd probably be all right. <laughs> all depends on two pool starts. That's the thing. If two pool starts at the weekend, you're thinking, yeah, this is it. We're going, we're going to go direct for once. But yeah. I think it, it is two teams that just have stinky defences with set pieces. But that, my issue is that they do have goals, Mike. They've got goals. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have a lot of them. We had we had one at the weekend, and that was great. But apart from that, it's been yeah. difficult. We've been really struggling to find the net. And I think, oh, I think it's the fact that we're not, we're not we're not clinical, though, Jack. Are we? I mean, the no. the the sixty seconds of highlights, extended highlights, I should point out that I saw from the uh, the the Everton game at the weekend. There were about three or four Southampton chances on goal, and I'm thinking if we could just be a bit more clinical with those chances. I think at the Premier League yeah. level, you just have to be more clinical with your chances because you're not going to get as many as you perhaps would in a in a championship with a side like we had. I mean, the, we had so many games that 4-5-0, you know, last season just because of, you know, you just got so many chances to score. But um, but it's going to be tricky. Like like you say, Jack, it's just a case of can we score? Can we get can we get the, the, the ball in there? And can we keep it tight at the back? Jack, do you think we'll, we'll set up with a, like a, a pretty heavily defensive setup, a bit like we did away at City, away at Arsenal sort of thing? I don't think he's going to change kind of what's worked the past couple of weeks, really. Um, starting, well, hopefully starting with that three at the back and everyone's it's still, still good to go. And yeah I, yeah, I just don't see him changing what works right now. I think, like, me, like we always say, mate, when you've got that lineup that you can kind of pick week in, week out, was when something starts to work. And now that he's kind of started to work out a little bit, I mean, it was it, the game. We got a lot better when Shigawara came on in the second half. I thought Russ's substitutions at the weekends mm. were really, really good. Like in the last few weeks, it's been a bit, there's been a lot that he should have done 
later than stuff that he should have done way earlier and stuff he shouldn't have done at all. But at the weekend, yeah. he really he really nailed it. And when Jugawara came on, it made such a massive difference. To have the start of the game with that security with Manning at the back and Kyle Walker beat it just they just know each other a bit better defensively, it's a bit more aware. Okay. And yeah. the same with the centre backs. They 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 know that they, they it's what we were doing last season, mate, when it was working for us was that that sort of thing. So it seems like that for me, that's where I want it to be at the weekend. I don't see the change much, apart from saying tall pull because corners, <laughs> like mm. any set piece, I just feel like it's just one of those games. It's not like Archer, like, Arch, don't get me wrong, Archer's been good. His movement's fantastic. And some of the runs he was doing, he's, he was really like, he was opening up the spaces for people. But mm. in a game like this, I'm like, oh, just give, give tall pull a go. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And weirdly, our goal at the weekend was, it was a counter attack, wasn't it? And we, we kind of caught. Everton off guard because they yeah. they had midfielders playing in fullback positions and then they pushed forward at the wrong time. Leo and Sugar had to come in, but um... it was something that we don't see very often at St Mary's as a counter attack like that. It's funny because when I, we, when I was watching when I was watching ma- uh, match today, like we watched obviously the Bournemouth game was on. I was like, cool. When they they hit City on the break, they were you know, they were rapido and like some of the moves were great. We need to be doing more of that. I'm kind of forgetting how we scored our goal. Mm. I think I was just kind of again I lost. I was very lightheaded when that goal went in. And I was like, oh, yeah, we did it. That is what we did. That, that, you know, we still had to go a long way around a little bit of it, but that is what we did. And it's just like, yeah, just a bit more of that, we, like urgency when we need it. Like there's been so many times where we pass backwards when we probably shouldn't. Mm. It, you know, that, that common complaint, but on the weekend, it was just like, oh, there you go. It works just quick in those moments when we, when we have to be. And if we could just stick that into the game more often, I think we're going to be a bit more deadly. Mm-hmm. And, and George, is there anyone you're particularly worried about from the Southampton line? I'm not expecting you to have studied our last ten games in the Premier League, but are, are there any names for you that, that stand out? You think? Oh, I'm worried about this tall Paul guy now, <laughs> <laughs> especially if I set piece record. No, but Archer, um, Archer can be dangerous. Um, I think if we go four at the back, um, I mean, I would see like. Walker Peters is someone who's not afraid to get forward, and that's where we can get hurt down okay. the sides. And it's especially if balls are being whipped into our box. If we, but it depends because Gary sometimes goes four at the back, and they start switching towards the five. Um, Do you have a preference? Most fans want the five. Okay, I, I think we stay for going for the five at the back, really. Mm-hmm. But um, I think he'll go four at the back against you a lot. So I think in wide areas, and is it, it, Manning is he the left wing back? Yeah, your yeah. left wing back. Yeah, is he good getting forward? Because if he is, then um, if we go forward at the back, then I think that's where you might get at us because our fullbacks in a back four it looks susceptible. So it'll probably be wide areas that you might get get at us. And if you're a five at the back, three come five at the back, then I presume you've got yeah, the width yeah. from your wing backs. To be honest, so yeah, I, I mean, he's Walker Peters still. Is he still at the heights he, he once was, or I, I, I think so. Kind of, yeah, he, he he struggled to adapt in the first few games, but that's every championship team coming up, and now he's been looking better. But yeah. in the last few games, he was he was playing on the left for the first start of the season with Sugar Wire playing on the right. Yeah. I think they, there might be a chance they, they they start like that at the weekend if that's the case because because Kyle just rips it down that side and Sugar Wire is so good on the right. I mean, we're mm. kind of like blessed with sort of full-back options right now when everybody's fit. So it, 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 there's a good chance he can play either side, really. Yeah. I think it's mad but, that we're talking yeah. about Ryan Manning, though. I mean, he, he has he has played quite well. And, and I has. think when we saw him in the lineup against... He came on a team sheet at Arsenal, we think like, oh, my goodness, what's this going to look like? And then all of a sudden, it's, you know, it's a clean sheet in the first half, which <laughs> minor victory, but it's, uh, you know, still pretty Ram- decent. Rambo's first play. first um, clean sheet, you know, of the season was at the weekend, you know, mm. was to be the first game we won. So, yeah, that's what, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, I think as well, we've, um, I think we've conceded the most uh, goals to centre-halves, and that just speaks to that set mm. these record, really, so... I don't know. I mean, do you, uh, you'd like you'd think a game like this would be one of those KG affairs, nil nil goal leaders. Right? But we are literally incapable of not conceding two goals. Mm-hmm. So I just do not know what we're going to see because if you like can't score, we can't not let the opposition score. 
<laughs> I've got no, I've got no idea. I've actually got no idea what's going to happen. Um, I couldn't even predict. Honestly, I couldn't even predict what it's going to be. It's, but if anyone, Gary needs it more than anything because I think there's, there's some fans that would say it might even be better in the long run if we were to lose this game, stack him, okay. get someone in, turn it round, rather than win potentially delay the inevitable and then find ourselves in, in further trouble, further down the line. Um, for so me personally... You're already there. You're there already at that, that, that level where you're saying it'd be better off if we that's lose. That's exactly how I'm seeing it. Wow. That's how I'm seeing it. Yeah, so I think at the end of the day, we are desperate for the points and it, it will happen anyway as far as I'm concerned. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. But I mean... Tricky. Yeah, what, what, what? How do you see it going? Are you confident? Um, or? I, I'm, I'm fairly apprehensive. It's the fact that you guys are scoring goals um, yeah. makes me a little bit nervous. Um, we also have hey. a pretty stinky out like record against you guys recently as well. But yeah. It's not, it's not good. And that, that, the last trip we made, we we made there. I mean, we had that amazing prowse free kick, but what? Not, we were so bad that game. Like you guys, absolutely mm-hmm. rat, 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 rotten. And we yeah. we did you with ten men, didn't we? A couple of seasons yeah. ago. With well, that, that say, a... you need a red card. That was one of the just yeah. <laughs> similar oh, circumstances yeah. as well. We were both um, we were both kicking around in the relegation place at that point as well, and that was that kicked us on. That did that. That was a big win for us. So hopefully, same again. That one. At that point, wow. yeah. I remember, I watched that one on holiday. Time, to, on return time yeah. to return the favour. Time to return the favour. No, but there, there we go. Um, but George, thank you so much. I did no have a question from someone yeah. on here. If there's anyone's got any more questions for George, um, stick them in the chat section right now. There was one from Louis that I did spot. Uh, where is it, Louis? Where did you put your question? I think here it is. It's very important. Ask him about the away pub situation. I heard it's a nightmare. Where, where can away fans go for um, uh, a cheeky pint before before the match? And there's a new, there's actually a new pub open uh, by my cousin. It, my cousin's opening. It's quite a big around Wolverhampton at the minute called Space. And it's just at the train station. And it's okay. quite like, it, it's brand new. So I'd say go to Space. It's where the old express and start. You literally can't miss it. As soon as you come out of the train station, it's literally your natural path. Um, nice. And yeah, that That's opened for the first out. time. First really? time that opened um, in the last, uh, last weekend. So it's brand new. Go, go check that out. Wow, what's Love on? That, that Louis going to want to know what's on tap. What's he got on draft there? Do you know? Uh, oh, he's put a picture on Instagram the other day. Actually, it's just space dot w l v, and you put a picture of the. Um, I think it's got a saw here on. Um, really neck, really oil, neck, neck oil. I like oh, neck oil to be fair. Um, but yeah, it's got it, it's uh, it's got a decent lineup. So yeah, try that. Fantastic stuff. That that is great, and, and Louis certainly is appreciating that straight away. He needs a Guinness, yeah. And if if we need a, a goal, Guinness, Guinness on tap, yeah. if if we need a goal, we normally send Louis down for a beer early at halftime. We always score if Louis in the in the under the under the, uh, the stand. So it's it's a little one between us. But there we go. Um, George, can I push you for a score prediction before you head out? We do our score predictions later on in the show, but if we can get yours, then I'll add okay. in later if you don't mind. I think Gary's going to do it in delay the inevitable. I'm going to go 2-1. <laughs> I'm going to go 2-1 Wolves. Love, Love it. That. You're so on brand with us. That's brilliant. <laughs> Even in those moments, you've still got back your side. Fair play. Love it. Love it. Got to do it. George, got to do it. Okay. Thank you so yeah, much for your time. Uh, go no and check out. You, you got your own channel? Always Wolves. Always Wolves TV. Um, go check yeah. out stuff. It's fantastic stuff. Brilliant. Lovely. Thank you, bro. Cheers. Cheers, George. Good to see you. Cheers, George. Bye.